Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Little, little less crowded uh, than yeah, last Sunday, so we've got to work on this. I know the weather's getting better. We're not allowed to stay home. We have to come and worship with the Lord. Good morning to everybody that's watching online. We appreciate it. Um, before we get started, I wanted to read something this morning. Our provider. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. That's Psalm 17, 8. God would use various people and resources to provide for us, but he is the source. Remembering that the key to staying dependent, we have a tendency to confuse the gift with the giver. It's easy to get our eyes focused on the provision rather than the provider. When that happens, our loyalty and trust shift as well, and we begin seeking things and people rather than God. Without realizing it, we become idolaters. God is the source of everything you need. Your children, jobs, spouses, friends, all are only tools that he uses to make the needs in your life. He, however, is the source. Let's get up and praise the Lord this morning. We're going to start out with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time we can come in your house and worship. We know that the Spirit is here. The Holy Spirit is here with us now. We ask your blessings on everyone here. We, we will sing praises to you, Lord, because without you we'd be nothing. This world would just be lost. And things need to get better on this world, Earth, uh, Lord. Things aren't getting any better, so I know it's getting closer to time for you to come back and get your children. And I think everyone in this room is ready. We hope a lot of people watching us online will be ready as well. If not, they need to listen to the word of Pastor Allen. Because coming to Jesus is where we all need to be. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
God Almighty, mighty than anything else. As I said before, he's our provider. There is no excuse that we don't go to him and ask for him to be with us every single day. Good, bad, ugly, always. I'd like to get some prayers and praises that we can lift up and keep up with this week. Anybody got something new? Yes. Can I have a prayer real quick? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely, Jackie's daughter. What's her name? Heather. Heather. Let's keep Heather in our prayers. She's having some health issues, and we want to remember her this week. Remember uh, Dennis? He's usually right beside of me. Him and his wife, his, him and Cindy, have got COVID. Again. Again. That's about three times. <laughs> Four. We will definitely keep in our prayers. We miss him here. We can have that. Testimony's good. Yes, ma'am. Uh, about, I'll have to go back. About 10 years ago, I had a hernia on my left side, and I had to go to the hospital to get the doctor right now. And here about five years ago, I got one on my right side. So I never did. It just kept getting worse the last six months, and it started swelling up and all. And I went out, the grass seemed to be cut real bad, and I went outside, and I couldn't, I wasn't even able to trying to help mom weed eat her uh, front flower bed, and lo and behold, <laughs> Copperhead says, hello. <laughs> but he didn't get me this time, so I'm happy. Hopefully he's gone. So that's a praise, no bite. Anybody else? Yes, yes, sir. So um, next month, um, I have a scholarship due. It's an essay I have to write, and um, I just like a pay request. God to help you finish that. Yeah. All right, help on the scholarship. Yes. 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 All right, we got it. Okay. Make sure I write that down. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for another day of life, Father. Oh, dear Lord, we give you all honor, praise, and glory for being all wise, all powerful, all good. We thank you, God, for hearing us. We thank you for being a loving God. 
for giving us everything that we've got, Father. Being able to hear your word today, we know that we're blessed just to hear that. Oh God, we come to you because we believe. We have not because we ask not. And we ask not because we don't believe. But God, we believe today. We're a group of believers. We come in here in one spirit and one accord because we know that you hear us. Amen. We know that you're our loving Father and you want us to come to you and tell you all about it. Good, bad, ugly, Lord. You're able to cure all. So God, we lay all these prayer requests and this wonderful testimony at your feet today, God, because we know if it be your will, Lord, there's nothing going to stand in your way. There's nothing that stands in the way of your love, Father. No matter how deep or far dark, desperate we get, there's nothing that can keep us from your love through your son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you for that. We thank you for him, oh God, is suffering. He came down here, Lord, and he didn't have to do that. And he died and took on all our burdens and our sins. And Lord, no matter what we go through, and sometimes it's some hard stuff, Lord, day by day, just trying to make it day by day in this old world. But Lord, we know there's a better one to come. And we know, oh Father, that you're going to have a new heaven and a new earth. And thank God Almighty, we're going to see our loved ones that have gone on before us, Lord, and you. And, Father, we know all the evil, all the wrongs, all the sickness, everything's going to be done away with, Father. And what a glorious time. We just have to believe. You either believe it or you don't. And, God, today we claim it. We believe it. So, Father, I give you all honor, praise, and glory. We ask you, Lord, for those that are hearing online, let them be blessed too, Lord. But let us live here today in a new spirit and not be ashamed to show it, Father, and not walk around like we're going to the death sentence. Oh, God, but walk around because we, we are victorious people. We have something inside of us, God, that can't be shut in. It's got to come out, and we need to let it shine. In Jesus' sweet and holy name, and for our sakes, I ask it. Amen. Amen. All right. Everyone standing up, let's uh, say hey to your neighbor. Glad you're at church. Glad to see you at church.
has always been special to me, but even more so, that little lady who's the flowers are put there today, Miss Aggie Wheeler, I had the privilege of helping her for a little while, Ann's mother, and that was her favorite song, and she was such a strong believer. She helped me at a dark time in my life. I just lost my husband, and Ann asked me to help her with her mother, and I did, and she helped me more than I helped her because she gave me love. We talked about heaven so many times. We talked about the song, so many things of life that she just helped me. And I just feel her presence in her spirit. And I know she's happy and she's in a good place. And I'm Amen. thankful for that. And I'm thankful for have had, had her in my life. And I just wanted to share that. I couldn't sing this song without letting you know if you didn't know her, she was truly a child of God. And I'm Amen. thankful to have had her in my life. Good morning, everybody. Valerie and I spent all yesterday cleaning pollen off the back porch. And I think I sucked about half of it up <coughs> in my lungs. But last Sunday, we ended with an empty tomb. Most of the time after, after Easter service, church goes right back into regular church mode. But I like Easter. I want to carry it on another week. I want to look at what happened those 40 days after that tomb was emptied. I have preached this sermon probably every Sunday after Easter since I've been preaching in one way, shape, or another. So let's see what happened in the next 40 days. We're going to start off in Matthew 28. Matthew chapter 28, verse 1. It says, after the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. So Matthew is telling us there that there are two Marys that went to look at the tomb. Luke tells us that not only there's two Marys, but Joanna and others were there as well. And Mark specifically mentions Salome. Now there are two Salomes in the Bible. The other Salome was the daughter of Herodias. And she danced for King Herod at his birthday banquet. And it impressed him so much, he said, I will give you whatever you want. So she went and talked to her parents. She said, what should I ask him about? And her dad said, ask for John the Baptist's head on a platter. That's how John the Baptist died. But the other Salome was the mother of James and John. She was the wife of Zebedee, and she was a follower of Jesus. She was one of the women watching from a distance as Jesus was crucified. And immediately after his death, these ladies went home to prepare spices and perfumes to 
anoint Jesus' body. And, and, and before they did that, Nicodemus had used a mixture of oil, uh, myrrh and aloe immediately after Jesus was put in there. They did that to control the smell of decomposition. But John tells us that Nicodemus brought 75 pounds of myrrh and aloe. Now, typically, you, don't, you wouldn't use nearly this much to anoint a, a, on a dead body because these were very expensive uh, perfumes. In today's prices, it would be roughly $175,000. So Nicodemus, had, he was loaded. He had, a, he had a bunch of money. But these ladies were so devoted to Jesus that even after his death, they were going to go care for his body. But when they arrived, they found the tomb. The stone was rolled away. There was an empty tomb, nothing there but grave clothes. And there was an angel there to announce his resurrection. In verse 6 through 10, he is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. They will see me there. It says they were afraid, yet filled with joy. That's a reasonable response. I think you're afraid because you just saw somebody that died three days ago. He's your friend, but you're filled with joy because he's not dead now. And remember a while back, we saw where every time an angel popped in, the first thing he said was, fear not. Fear not. The angel was there when they arrived. Verse 3 said, his appearance was like lightning and his clothes were as white as snow. Now, this would be a scary thing to walk up to in a cemetery. An angel with, with clothes as white as snow and appearance as lightning. But they were, they were joyful at that news of the risen Savior. He's not there. There's nothing but his grave clothes in there. They knelt down when they saw him, and they grabbed his feet, and they worshipped him. Now, his appearance to these ladies is very important in the fact that if this were only a legend, if this was just a made-up story, no woman would have ever been the first to see him. No woman would ever be the first to witness him because a woman's testimony would not be admitted. And it's still that way today in some of the Middle Eastern countries. But Jesus then repeated the angel's command to tell his brother, go to Galilee. And Jesus will remain on earth 40 days before ascending into heaven. Now keep your finger right there or mark your place there and turn over to Luke chapter 4. In Luke chapter 4, we're going to start off in verse 9 through 12. It says, When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others that went with him that told this to the apostles. But they did not believe this, women, because their words seemed like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by, the, uh, by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Now, once again, Peter immediately reacts. Peter is not one to think about something before he reacts. His, he don't have a filter. When something goes in here, he starts reacting immediately, right or wrong. He's going to do something. But John tells us that he also ran to the tomb with Peter. As a matter of fact, John tells us that he outran Peter. I think there's probably some jealousy over Peter's relationship with Jesus. Because John, uh, John refers to himself as the one who Jesus loved. And in John 20, 
John mentions three times that he outran Peter to the tomb. But when they got there, there was nothing but grave clothes in the tomb. And it's likely a grave robber is going to take the grave clothes off and, and fold them up and lay them there. So it's not likely that, that somebody stole the body. So it says Peter walked away wondering what had happened. In verses 13 through 18, he says, Now that same day the two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem that does not know the things that have happened there in these days? So here we have a disciple named Cleopas and an unknown disciple on the way to Emmaus. Now, this is the only mention of Cleopas in the Bible. It's possible that he was Clopas, which is mentioned other times in the Bible. But that's all we know. And, and the only thing we know about uh, Emmaus is that it was seven miles from Jerusalem. But there must have been something significant about these two disciples. They were not from the first 12. At least Cleopas was not. The other one could have been. Most likely, these were from the 72 that Jesus had sent out before. He had sent them out two by two. And so now they were probably returning home uh, to Emmaus after the Passover and the crucifixion. And Jesus appears to these two. He appeared to the ladies first before he appeared to the eleven. So it says Jesus walked along with them and he didn't, they didn't recognize him. And it's obviously they know Jesus. They're talking about what happened to him. They were his disciples. So it's obvious they know who he is. And we don't know why they didn't recognize him. Most likely it's because Jesus caused them not to recognize him. But it's possible it just could have been all the confusion from everything going on. And then Jesus asked, what are you talking about? So Cleopas just assumes he's a visitor and, and didn't know what was going on. In verses 19 through 27, Jesus said, What things? About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, as the third day, since all this took place, in addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early in the morning, but they didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it was just as the women had said. They did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not Messiah, did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter into glory? And Peter with Moses and all the prophets, he and beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in the scriptures concerning themselves. So Jesus asked them what they were talking about, and with their limited knowledge of what was going on, they tried their best to explain it to him. Now, I, I wouldn't want to try to explain something like that. If I was walking along, if I saw Jesus and then all of a sudden they said, you know, Jesus, he's dead. But no, he's not dead anymore. He's gone. The tomb's empty. His grave clothes are in there. I would not want to try to explain that. But they were missing the one key. And that's the key that locks, unlocks the prophetic scriptures. The Messiah had to suffer and die before he went into his glory. Jesus said they were foolish and slow of heart to believe all the prophets had spoken. You see, they believed the promises of the Messiah's coming. They just could not accept the prophecies that the Messiah would have to suffer and die. So Jesus, as they're walking along, is explaining these prophecies to them. In verses 28 and 29, as they approached the village to which they were going, 
Jesus continued as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. See, even in their sadness, these men are showing the love that Jesus taught them. They're offering this stranger a place to spend the night because he, he, they don't know how far he's going. But they offer him a place, you know, come stay with us, we'll feed you. And then in verse 30 and 31, it says, Well, they sat at the table with them. He took the bread, he broke it, he gave thanks, and then he began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. So when Jesus broke the bread in communion, God opened their eyes and then they realized who it was. It's been Jesus with us all the time. But then he disappeared. Then he disappeared. I wonder what was going through their minds right then. They just realized they'd been walking for uh, this time and Jesus had been killed as walking with them and then all of a sudden he just has communion and then he just disappears. I don't know how long Jesus walked with them. Uh, like I said, it's seven miles. Uh, and so it's approximately, it takes approximately two hours to walk seven miles. So Jesus had been walking with them. He spent some time with them. Uh, he spent enough time to tell them everything that was going on. And they never recognized him. How many times are we in the presence of Jesus and we don't recognize him? Hebrews 13, 2 said, Don't forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. You see, we're constantly in the presence of Jesus. If we're Christians, we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. The Holy Spirit. Jesus, God, they're all one and the same. We are constantly in the presence of the Lord. Verse 32, they ask each other, were not our hearts burning within us when they talked to us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? You see, Jesus opened their eyes and their hearts to understand all these scriptures that they had never understood, and it brought a warmth to their heart. I remember years ago trying to read the Bible before I was saved and just things just didn't make sense just don't make sense what is all this nonsense they're talking about it's not until you have the Holy Spirit in you to interpret what the Bible says and then they and that's they just finally got it he opened their eyes Verse 33 through 35, it says, They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together, saying, It is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told him what happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized them when, they, when he broke the bread. You see, these two didn't take any time getting back to Jerusalem. When they got there, they found out that Peter had, had already seen him. And it, in 1 Corinthians 15, it says he appeared to Peter and then to the 12. So they, they got there and they figured, well, Peter's already seen him, so we, you know, we've got some, somebody to back this story up, no matter how crazy it seems. So in verse, <coughs> excuse me, in verse 36, it says, while they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. How would you like for Jesus just to pop in? It'd be great if he popped in this morning because we're all in church. We all got our Bibles out. We're all worshiping him. We're all, but what if he popped in on Friday night? What if he popped in on Friday night? Too often we find ourselves in situations hoping that Jesus don't pop in. But it's too late. He's there. He's there. We are constantly in the presence of Jesus. But what about these disciples? What happened when he just popped into the disciples? John 30, 19 said, uh, On the evening of the first week, the disciples were together with all the doors locked for fear of the Jews. He said, They were afraid. 
they were afraid because Jesus was gone. They didn't have Jesus to take care of all this stuff anymore. Who's going to take care of us? Who's going to take care of us when the, the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees come to kill us for being Christians? They were afraid. But while they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Don't be afraid. And have peace here. Verses 37 through 43. Look at verse 37 first. They were startled and frightened, thinking they had seen a ghost. Remember the story when they were out on the boat and the storm blew up? Here comes Jesus just walking along, just trucking along the water. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Verse 38. He said to them, why are you troubled and why do doubts rise in your mind? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of their joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took and ate it in their presence. Instead of welcoming him, instead of rejoicing, they were terrified. They were afraid. They were troubled. So Jesus had to assure that it was really him. See, I've got these, got these scars in my these holes in my hands and in my feet. I've got this cut in my side. You can stick your hand up in here. But they still didn't believe. He asked them for food. Which leads me to believe ghosts don't eat. Ghosts don't eat. He asked him for food. He was proving that he was alive, that his resurrected body had flesh and bones. But still, even though he had flesh and bones, he could still appear and disappear. He could go through locked doors. Over in John chapter 20, verses 21 through 23. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on him and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Jesus speaks twice in here about peace. The first place, what well, first peace we saw is in Luke 24, 36. And then here again in verse, 20, uh, in verse 19. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Peace be, this is peace with God. This is peace with God. We can have a peace with God, and we get that through Jesus' death on the cross. His death on the cross came to bring us peace. And the second peace we see here in verse 21 is the peace of God. The peace of God. This comes with his presence within us. We have the peace of God when we accept Jesus as our Savior. And it comes with us in his presence as we, uh, we go out into the world and serve as ambassadors of God. But then Jesus breathed upon him. He breathed upon them, just like Adam. He breathed life into them. He breathed the Holy Spirit into them. This Holy Spirit would give them all the spiritual power and discernment they would need to fulfill his commission, that commission to go out. This remitting, remitting power that he gave to the apostles does not apply to Christians today. Although these apostles had very special privileges, nowhere in the New Testament does it say they have forgiven sins? See, the coming of the power, uh, the, the coming of this power was personal. It was personal and it was individual. He personally gave them individually the power that you can do whatever you want to do, whatever you need to do, and you can also forgive sin. But on the day of Pentecost, when they received the Holy Spirit, it was corporate. It was a corporate act then. It was. It empowered them for the service and witnessing. Like I said, this remaining power only gave, they gave the apostles the ability to forgive sin. 
in verses 24 through 29. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. See the other disciples, see the other, so the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see all the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and I put my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came in and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord, my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Old down in Thomas. He wasn't present at the first meeting. See what happens when you don't come to church or the church functions, when you don't go to Bible study every night. You miss out on the good stuff. Thomas missed out on Jesus breathing the Holy Spirit into him. He had to see it to believe it. I had that happen to me just recently at a funeral. Somebody come up to me and said, you're Reverend Alan Hicks? <laughs> said, yep. Said, I had to see it to believe it. <laughs> it's not the first time that has happened to me. But that's what Thomas is. It, Thomas, he wasn't there. He missed out because he was not present there. And God, Jesus knew it. He said, I know what you said. You said last week that you're going to have to put your finger in my holes and and in my, his hand in my side to believe it. So he said, do it. Here I am. There's so many doubting Thomases in the world today. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 that Jesus appeared to Peter and to the, then to the twelve. And after that, more than 500 of the brothers at the same time. Then Paul said, and then last of all, he appeared to me also. Go back to Matthew 28 where we started. Look at verses 16 through 20. It says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When he saw him, when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Mark 16, verse 19 adds, After the Lord had spoken to them, he was taken up to heaven, and he sat at the right hand of God. If you're a believer this morning, it's your job to take the gospel of Christ outside these doors. If you're a doubting Thomas, Jesus says, Don't stop doubting and believe. So we see these eyewitness reports, more than 500 of them at one time. You believe what you see on the news. That's just someone else's eyewitness account. Jesus said Thomas believed because he had saw it. But blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. You can be blessed with eternal life today. Just by accepting Jesus. If everyone would please bow your heads, close your eyes. I'm going to come down front. We're going to open this altar up. If you're in here this morning and have never received Christ, my prayer is that you would be this morning and you would make him your Savior. If you're watching online or at home and you've never received Christ, the Bible says if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, if you believe that he was raised, killed, 
died and buried and rose again on the third day, you will be saved. It says you will be saved. There's, there's no doubt about it. Jesus will save you today. Lord, if there's one in the sound of my voice, Father God, that does not know you, I pray that, that right now you would, you would come into their heart, Lord, that, the, that you would touch their heart, that you would comfort them, Lord, knowing that you're there for them at any time of the day or the night. And in order to gain a eternity in heaven, all they have to do is trust and believe in Jesus Christ. We're going to open up this altar if someone would like to come and pray this morning. If you would like to pray to receive Christ. If you would like to pray for a family member that doesn't know Christ. Or if you just want to come up and commune with God one-on-one. -on -one. that chorus one more time. Oh, Y'all sing with us. Aren't you happy to know that 
If it was just you, Jesus would still died for you. Amen. He has died for all of us. He died for people that don't even care if he died for them. But uh, let's pray for those people as we go through our day every day. Uh, we'll worship with our tithes and offerings on the way out this morning. Uh, Sisters of Strength meeting is May 7. May 7. It will be at, at my house. At the home of my lovely bride. Right. And the address is in here, so please, ladies, come. We have right. so much fun. We learn so much. Please come. That's right. It's come to Maggie's house. That's right. Come to Maggie's house. <laughs> uh, church, next church dinner, the first Tuesday, May 2nd, is going to be at Captain Stanley's. Ooh, good. Yeah, everybody likes Captain Stanley's. I think we might stay there for a couple of months until we find somebody <laughs> else that, that treats us as good as they do. Um, any Bible study, that's our Bible study back this week, and, and uh, we, we took the week off. And our, our instructor gave us the week, in, week off. And <laughs> Sisters <laughs> of Strength also has some items over here for sale for the uh, building fund, and also there's some homeless bags that the ladies have gotten together. We've got lots of them. That, that way we can share. You don't have to tell them who it's from or anything. Just hand it to somebody to show them that God really does love them because they'll question it. That's right. Every time they get it. Yes. Anything else? Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. You're we pray right now that you prepare the heart for the people you're going to put in front of us this week. Lord, and give us the courage to tell those people about Jesus and what he has done for our life and what he did for their life on the cross. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.